Good morning. Welcome back to the Y254 channel. You are watching the Y in the Morning show. And this show actually runs every single day from 7 a.m. until 10 a.m. And particularly for today, we're going to focus on health. It is my favorite day. And right now, we have a wonderful doctor on set with us, a very able, very experienced doctor who has done medicine for actually the past 20 years and then decided to focus and specialize in dermatology or what we call skin doctor. She'll actually explain that. Let me not even try and explain that and actually if you guys want to talk to us we encourage you to do so please reach out to us on our social media pages on Facebook and Twitter you can find them right at the bottom of the screen and also want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also you can find me on joy underscore muchache if need be on Twitter alone and let's dive right in Karibu Sana doctor thank you very Ruth much Shaini. thank you yes and actually you're based at the doctor uh, sorry at the at the doctor's park that's right, yeah. I'm based in Parklands at 3rd Avenue Parklands Okay. at Doctors Park. All right. And yes, I, I briefly mentioned that you had done medicine for 20 years and then specialized for five years. That's right. And so you've been doing dermatology for approximately the five years. That's right, That's yeah. That's wonderful. All right. And so maybe we can start off by the basics. Um, we have some viewers that are not very familiar with the term dermatology. Maybe we can make it a bit simple for them by having an expert explain to them as exactly what it entails, dermatology. Right, so dermatology is um, a special branch of medicine yes. um, where the doctor specializes in the treatment of diseases affecting hair, mm -hmm. skin, mm -hmm. and the nails. Mm. But dermatology also encompasses um, cosmetology, which addresses people's cosmetic concerns, mm -hmm. And then venereology, which deals with venereal diseases, so some sexually transmitted diseases. And then leprology, which is the treatment of leprosy. Wow. So all of that is, a, is actually management. A dermatologist will manage all of those conditions. I see. And when we were chatting a little bit earlier on, you made it clear to me that right now the, the, the number of certified and... Um, people who are allowed to practice dermatology here in Kenya with certificates are around the number of 25 thereabouts. That's correct. And maybe we can touch on why uh, that's the case before we dive in to the various skin conditions. Right, so um, 20, about 25 board certified dermatologists in Kenya, which means that you've done the proper degree, come back, you've worked under supervision mm -hmm. um, with the government and then they've approved you to be a consultant dermatologist in the country. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's an expensive specialty, yeah. um, so all the dermatologists are trained outside of, the, out, outside of Kenya, mm -hmm. um, some in Europe, some in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously because it's expensive and there are not many people that have done that, mm -hmm. um, we're only 25, serving a population of about 50 million, which wow. is the latest estimated population of Kenya in 2019. Right. So it's very few doctors that right. are dealing with such a large population right. and conditions um, that affect skin, hair, nails are big. Right. Um, and a lot of people may not even know where they must go and get help and can mm. they even get help and mm. which specialty will sort their issues out for them. So okay. this is a prime opportunity for me to educate people that, you know, dermatology, there are dermatologists in and around, um, well, in Nairobi and, and around in major cities. Um, so you can get help for conditions that are, that you, that are bothering you. Right. And before we, uh, we, before we get to let our audience know where they can get uh, all the help for the skin conditions that they may have, and also towards the end, we're also going to touch on, is it a factor that maybe people don't know about skin conditions and dermatologists, or maybe is it just um, kind of an expensive treatment? But that's towards the end. Right now, I kind of wanted us to open up the world of dermatology and to touch on the areas that you focus on because you mentioned quite a whole list <coughs> hair nails um, you mentioned um, I think cosmetology venereal mm -hmm. diseases mm -hmm. and so do you work on all of these on a daily basis or have you decided to specialize in a couple so we generally deal personally I deal with all of them okay um, most patients are seen by a general practitioner who will then know that this condition will best be managed by a dermatologist mm -hmm. Um, in in my own in my own practice, um, obviously most commonly we treat conditions of the skin. 
Yeah. Um, and there are lots of common skin conditions. I mean, just to give examples to the youth, you know, acne is one of the major problems. Um, in little children, eczema. Um, they can start developing eczema from about the age of three months. Um, nappy rashes are big. Um, and then as you get older, um, aging is an issue that affects a lot of people. Oh, wow. And then other conditions that can come up because of other systemic problems um, in the body. Mm. Um, psoriasis is one of those that we deal with. Vitiligo, where people lose color. Um, excessive sweating, hives. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about dermatology is we deal with um, with the population starting from day one right through to you know people's last days. Yes, so yes. we will deal with um, pediatric dermatology and then adult dermatology and then there's the medical aspect of dermatology which is the treatment of, of, of conditions and the surgical aspect of dermatology where we perform surgery um, to you know remove suspicious you know things on the skin lumps and bumps mm. and we're worried about skin cancers mm. and mm. things like those so um, with regards to the medical side of it we trained to deal with all conditions affecting skin hair nails um, any venereal diseases yes we will link up with you know specialists in other fields if it's gynecology or urology mm. Um, to sort those out, so we'll work as a multidisciplinary team and not just alone. Right. Um, and then uh, cosmetology. A lot of people are concerned now about <laughs> wrinkles and, you know, wanting to look youthful later on in life. And um, apart from the advice that we give on nutrition and you know alcohol and things like those, um, there are cosmetic procedures that are done. Um, so chemical peels and microderma abrasion and Botox, which is big, <laughs> yes. um, just to make you know people comfortable in their own skin. That's why you know we've done we're, we're trained in this specialty. I understand, and this is quite an interesting specialty because uh, I understand that the skin is actually one of the is it the largest organ? It is the absolutely joy. It's yeah. the largest organ. In case you youngsters didn't know that, this top layer of your body is the largest organ in your whole entire body, and so. So obviously that means that there's some care that has to be put into it. It, it just can't be left TV or to an owner. And so that's why we have specialists like uh, Dr. Rube come on and tell us about some of these things. And now that you've said the areas in which you specialize in, let's talk about the most common ones right here in Kenya. And then right. we can slowly zero in. Um, so when we're chatting, you discuss things like psoriasis, mm -hmm. uh, eczema, mm -hmm. Um, and you also mentioned aging as a factor. Mm -hmm. And yes, I can understand why people want to stay youthful forever, <laughs> you know, you have to, and also because of so much, um, the things we watch in the entertainment news with people literally not aging, mm. and you're looking at your age mate and thinking to yourself, why do I have these wrinkles? My age mate doesn't. Mm. Oh, there's a way I could fix it. Maybe I can get a couple injections here and there. And I think it's a fascinating field that you're, that you're actually involved in. And right now in Kenya, I think acne is such an issue for our youngsters. Acne, um, psoriasis, as well as eczema. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can shed some light on others which are a problem. I think uh, a little bit of hair loss here and there when it comes to middle age people. That's um, right. But at the moment, maybe we can discuss the most common issues so in if this we region. Start, yeah, so if we start with acne, what a lot of people will say is it's, it's one of those teenage conditions, um, it'll disappear. Unfortunately, you do need to get treatment for it because the problem uh -huh. with acne is there is a genetic predisposition. Yes. So somebody in your family must have had acne. Um, youngsters will confirm that their siblings might have acne as well. Um, and basically, because of the hormonal changes going on at puberty, um, the sebum gland under the skin on the face, especially chest, back and shoulders, produces too much sebum. Yeah. So they have oily skin. Okay. Um, and these pimples come up and mm. they think they can sort it out themselves. Mm. Um, a lot of people use a lot of home remedies. Um, now I'm a Kenyan Indian, um, <laughs> but um, yeah. I, I'm not clear on how turmeric and things like those will help. I've I seen can, those on YouTube. So I can only <laughs> comment on the, the medical treatment. Mm -hmm. um, the, the problem, problem with acne is you can scar. That's uh -huh. the biggest problem. Okay. And which is why we would recommend that you be seen by a dermatologist. There are lots of treatment options available. 
um, starting from topical treatments to oral medication um, and obviously just general skin care. Now a lot of people will say um, there's a myth that people that have acne are unclean and things like those. That's not true um, because the sebum is produced from within. Yes. Yes. Um, so, obviously, we do recommend washing your face, you know, twice a day. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the the thing that that I think most people need to know is whether diet is linked with acne. Mm. And for for many many years, a lot of people had linked up many things to acne, including nuts and dairy products and things like those. Um, but the latest research has shown that a very high glycemic diet, which means very high diet in sugar, ah. actually worsens acne. Wow. So in a study where um, some patients with acne were on a low sugar diet, yeah. actually showed better improvement than the ones that were on a high sugar diet. I see. Um, but, but those are things that, that we discuss with you when you come in. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the thing with the skin is, it's the largest organ in the body, that's right. It's the organ that everybody sees. Yeah. You don't see your kidney, <laughs> but you can see the I'm skin. Scared. And it, it's associated with a lot of psychological sort of issues if there's a problem on the skin. Wow. And people will try and hide it, and that's fine for areas that you can hide, but you can't cover your face. No. So if there are children that are being affected by acne, I would highly recommend that you go and see a dermatologist and get help because there is a lot of help that's available. Right. And once they get clear skin, it improves their performance in school and, you know, of their course. social interactions, things yeah. like those. So. Mm. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, <clears throat> the effects that some of these conditions have on our people because mm. not only does that happen, but not only do they feel bad about themselves if they have acne, other kids bully them. And That's so right. they yeah. lose concentration, they can't focus in class, yeah. they keep thinking about how terrible their skin is, and like you said, the grades do go down yeah. until uh, things are dealt with and treatment is given and things start to blossom again. Absolutely. And that's because the child can now focus, the child is not being bullied, they're happy in school yeah. and they're comfortable in their own skin. And um, maybe I could just talk about, because I have eczema, and they called it specifically adult eczema. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, I have been given treatment for it, but I don't use it because <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> I should use it because I did try it the first two weeks, I did see a difference. Mm -hmm. But thank God and thankfully, and not to bash anyone that has eczema on the face, I do tend to get my, on my hands and my, below my knees. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that is. And I did suffer a lot wearing a lot of leggings, wearing a lot of pull necks, wearing a lot of long sleeve clothes. Mm. And maybe we can touch a little bit about what eczema is and because we talked about acne. Mm -hmm. Now we can chat about eczema and um, what some of these things and then we can talk about the psychological effects that these skin conditions have on people. Because I know for me, I wasn't a happy kid just because of that. Oh. Like if it's well, gotten to a place, you're seeing me in a short skirt and short sleeves, that means I have overcome. Well. I'm mm. good now. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind if you see. Yeah. It's nice to listen about someone's journey yeah. with, with the skin condition. And you're absolutely right. Um, it, it has a huge impact on, on the psychological aspect of that, of that individual. Um, so it's been called a, adult eczema because it came up in, in adulthood. Um, but generally, eczema, known as atopic dermatitis, will come up sort of around about three months of age. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll come on the face, mm -hmm. where you get dry, itchy areas on the skin mm -hmm. um, that weep. So you can have wet eczema. Wow. Um, and you know the itching is 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 quite quite you know severe. Yeah. Um, and in so babies, it'll be on. It'll start up on the face, and then it'll show up, you know, on their arms and on their legs um, and a lot of mothers at that point get rather startled yes. and they will switch to the internet and you know google things on how to manage that the skin um, and some people get it wrong because the problem is the skin is your first barrier yeah so it protects you yes. from infections and things like those now if there's a dysfunction of that barrier then we're worried about infections getting under the skin. And when you're itching the skin and there's this disruption, 
um, applying irritants on the skin can actually worsen that e that eczema. Um, so if you come and if you're reviewed by a dermatologist, um, they'll make the diagnosis first of all, confirm that it is eczema. No, there are 3,000 diagnoses in dermatology, so it's not oh. that simple. Wow. That anything that appears on the skin at three months must be eczema. It's not. Um, so it's first of all a clinical diagnosis has to be made, and then moisturizing the skin is probably the most important thing in eczema. Um, after moisturizing and you know giving you tips on on bathing, um, a lot of people don't even know that you shouldn't overbathe the baby. Um, you know, the baby. Yeah, so like oh. take them in for a, for a bath if, like three times a day. Yeah, right. Because right. you know, bathing a baby will dry the skin out even more. Yeah. Um, a lot of adults go into the shower for 20 minutes, 30 minutes <laughs> to dry the skin With out. Scorching hot water. Scorching hot water, exactly. Yeah. So the hot water also dries the skin. So you've already got a dry, itchy condition, and then you're further drying the skin, and a lot of it is just because. I suppose people haven't been educated about how to manage that, that skin condition. But dermatologists are quite clear with atopic dermatitis. There is a genetic history. Um, there's allergies in the family or a predisposition to allergies. So in the family, somebody might have itchy eyes or runny nose or asthma and then eczema. So if you have any one of those I four, have all those four. All well, four. Okay. Yeah, well, itchy it, eyes, runny nose, yes. You see, people with allergies are very intelligent, Joyce, so you must be one of them. So ah, yes. um, four <laughs> conditions genetically inherited in a family, mm -hmm. one can get all of them, or different individuals in the family can get the different variants of it. Okay. So if you have got eczema, it's very dry skin, it needs to be moisturized with a proper moisturizer, um, there are obviously products out there in the market that claim that it moisturizes the skin, but a dermatologist will do what clinical studies have confirmed. Yes. Um, so good, good moisturization, and then obviously when it's active, they need treatment. So they need medicines that need to be applied to the skin. If it's very severe eczema, they will need oral medication as well. Okay. And something to knock out the itching because it is a very itchy condition. Yes, it is. Very itchy. As you progress on in life and go into adolescence, the location of the eczema changes. Ah. So it might not be on the face, it will now be sort yeah. of within the folds. Yeah. Um, and then as you get older again, and if you've never had eczema before, you can end, end up getting it on the extremes of your body, so on your hands, on your feet, on your face, on your scalp, things like those. Um, eczema's management is more about patient education and teaching them how to deal with their condition because eczema comes and goes so it waxes and wanes not because we don't know what we're doing it's because that's the nature of the condition so on you know if there's no triggers like like cold weather a lot of people will overdress during cold season mm. um, and wear the wrong clothes mm -hmm. so we recommend obviously wearing cotton clothes Cotton. But if you're wearing synthetic material, that will irritate the skin okay. and um, the eczema will worsen. Right. Um, very hot weather will make you sweat and sweat is an irritant. Right. So using the wrong soap can worsen eczema. Mm. So we teach you on all those aspects in the management of eczema so that at home you're doing the right thing mm. and the medication that we're prescribing mm. we put you on it and then gradually...